First on CBS Mornings, American Paul Whelan, held in Russia for more than five years. He's got a lot to say in his first interview since being released. The Marine veteran was convicted on espionage charges and then freed two months ago in a historic prisoner swap. And he told our Face of the Nation moderator, Margaret Brennan, that his prison time was physically hard, but mentally hard, too. From day one, I was being told that um, there would be a trade, a political solution to the situation. But as it dragged on, um, you know, it, 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 it did play with my mind. There was, a, there was a psychological piece to this that even though now, you know, I seem like I'm doing okay, mm -hmm. um, I've put back on some of the weight that I lost, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I see a picture of me from the prison or I see a picture of me from court that's on TV. And that takes me back to being in that court or being in the prison. You have PTSD. Yeah, it's, it's a form of PTSD. Um, and it's it's common, you know, with with people mm -hmm. that have been in this situation. It'll go away probably over a few years, but it's it's hard to you know compartmentalize and block out that that portion of what I went through. I bet it is. Margaret Brennan joins us once again. Margaret, good morning to you. What an incredible interview. It's amazing. We were just saying, I don't think we've ever heard his voice before yeah. that interview there with you. Uh, so it's been a couple months since he's been free and here in the U.S. How does he seem? Tony, Paul was clear it's very difficult. He is trying to adjust to what it means to be a free man now after nearly five and a half years in captivity. It's tremendously difficult just to sleep through the night. He said that's mm. because during his captivity, the lights were kept on 24 hours a day and the Russian guards would shine a light in his face every two hours while wow. he was sleeping. Um, the outside world has changed in, in five years from electric vehicles to iPhones. He's adjusting and he wants to put his life back together and write a book about his time in prison, in part because he said he doesn't want others to fall into the same trap that he did when he was arrested by the FSB, Russian intelligence, back in 2018. Margaret, it is so good to see him. You know, we all stayed in contact with his siblings. I can't imagine how they're feeling. It looks like he's putting on some weight, which is nice. He looks good, sounds good, but I know he's dealing with a lot of stuff. But this is the thing. There were other high-profile swaps we know that, that were going on while he was detained. There was Trevor Reed, then, of course, WNBA star Brittany Griner. Did he talk about that at all, what it was like for him not to be a part of those releases? Gail, uh, he did, the highs and the lows of it. Uh, Paul Whelan said it was, frankly, devastating to be left behind twice in those two prisoner swaps back in 2022, <laughs> even though he had been held longer than either of the two other prisoners. His lowest point was after Brittany Griner was freed, which he learned about when the prison warden at the labor camp pulled him off the factory floor and told him the White House had called. His response to Secretary Blinken's phone call was, you have abandoned me. Mm, wow. Mm. But in the end, President Biden did ultimately get a deal to bring him home by convincing Germany to release a convicted assassin that Vladimir Putin wanted to bring back to Russia. And that is in part, Gail, why President Biden is in Germany thanking the German chancellor today for this extraordinarily large diplomatic deal to free the hostages. Wow, Margaret, nice job. Congrats yeah. on getting that interview. Yeah, really. A lot of us wanted to talk to him. Yeah, really great. great to hear from him. And we're going to have more of that interview and more with you, Margaret, in the uh, 9 o'clock hour. And also, uh, Paul Whelan will be on Face the Nation this Sunday as well, so check your lo local listings there. Paul Whelan is speaking out in his first interview since being released. He was freed as part of a historic prisoner swap in August. We all remember that. Two years earlier, he watched the Biden administration negotiate deals to bring home basketball star Brittany Griner and another American, but he was left behind. First on CBS Mornings Plus, Whelan told Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan about the full circle moment he had minutes after touching down on U.S. soil at an air base in Virginia. There was a TV on, and I'm standing by the TV watching, and somebody said, oh, that's, that's just the Olympics. I was like, really? Because I hadn't seen the Olympics. And, and you know, it was, it was women's basketball. And as I'm looking, I said, hey, look, it's Brittany. Brittany's on TV. Brittany so, Griner. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was one of those incredible moments where you're, you know, you're, you're finally connecting things. Yeah. And, you know. It's surreal. It is. But, you know, uh, Brittany was a, a great help. Um, after she came home, mm -hmm. you know, I think probably the, you know, within days of her getting home, she, she was talking to people about how they could support me. And she had uh, people making uh, monetary donations, sending cards, sending letters, mm -hmm. um, offering all sorts of support. 
Joining us from Washington is Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan. Margaret, an incredible interview and access that you have there. There's so little that we know though, about what life is like in Russia when you are a prisoner. What did he tell you about being in a labor camp? It was cold. It was remote. Uh, he described what he called sleep deprivation as torture. Uh, he had lights shown in his face every two hours by Russian guards. What you heard him describe in that clip was a high moment. Uh, he told us his lowest moment was in 2022. That's when he was on the factory line at the labor camp. The warden pulled him off the floor to tell him that he had been left behind again the second time in a U.S.-Russia prisoner swap, and that made his life even harder. Um, Paul Whelan said he was sewing buttons on uniforms for Russian soldiers in, in these factories. Uh, the food was terrible. He lost a tremendous amount of weight. He told us uh, he coped in part by writing letters home and making friends with other prisoners who were mainly younger inmates, he said, from mainly Muslim Central Asian countries, and he tried to learn their languages so that the Russian guards couldn't understand their conversations. He also shared that there are secret networks inside these prison camps and that they essentially bribed guards to provide them with burner phones so that they could make calls to the outside world. That is how we as journalists heard uh, some of the reporting about Paul Whelan when he called into uh, networks or called into radio shows. Those were secret phones. They basically just paid off corrupt Russian guards. Wow, uh, fascinating on, on every level. Uh, you know, Margaret, I imagine when he found out he would be going home, uh, he was overjoyed. But what did he say about that moment of learning the news that this is going to end? This was the most emotional part of our conversation. Um, before he left Russia, they put Whelan in solitary confinement for five days. So he, he came out of black lit, blackness, literally. He, he knew something was going to happen. He wasn't sure what. He had positive indications from the diplomats who had contact with him. But he said the next thing he knew, he was boarding a bus and then a plane with other prisoners. They landed in Turkey. And in that country, he was handed over to the U.S. They put him on a CIA plane, a small one, with two other wrongfully detained American prisoners, both of them journalists. And Whelan told us it didn't really sink in that he was coming home until he was flying over England, when he was in friendly airspace and he saw the white cliffs of Dover. Uh, he teared up telling us about that. He had no idea that when he landed in America that the president and vice president of the United States would be greeting him on the tarmac. And he said, you know, he was mainly focused on just not falling, coming down the stairs when he saw the president of the United States in front of him. What a moment. Margaret Brennan, thank you so much. And you at home can watch her entire interview with Paul Whelan on Face the Nation this Sunday here on CBS.